So, um, hi, I'm Jan. I'm a PhD student here at the uh, University of Geneva Renewable Energy Systems Group. And uh, today I'm, I'm just going to show you our current study where we model the regional implications of Central Europe's electricity sector uh, for the year 2035 um, by using two models, um, the expanse and also the PIPSA model. Um, all right. So um, the study region you can see here on the right side. So we look at six countries in Central Europe, and we're interested in um, modeling uh, the regional impacts of the electricity system on things like uh, direct employment in the electricity sector and uh, greenhouse gas emissions, local air pollution, and so on for um, these nuts regions um, uh, here in, in Europe, which you can see here. Um, and we do this by soft linking two electricity system models, so the expanse model and PIPSA, to create a sort of hybrid model um, with a high spatial resolution. So we look at NAS3 regions. We uh, look at the cost optimal, but also near optimal spatial allocation of electricity generation. Um, we do this by, with a method called modeling to generate alternatives. Uh, with PIPSA, we include storage and transmission, hourly operation and capacity investment. And from that, we look at the regional impacts. And also we look at, um, uh, regional equity of uh, system costs across our regions. I'll uh, explain that in the next slide. And here's uh, the overview. So we build it with open source data. This all goes into the expanse model, which um, allocates electricity generation capacity um, um, cost optimally, but also near optimally with up to 20% higher. Um, so in our definition, uh, we have up to 20% 20 20 higher levelized cost of electricity generation for that near optimal space. And uh, then this goes into the pipes model, which complements expands with hourly complications, uh, transmission and storage. And we have uh, quite a technology rich model. So we look at a different hydro um, uh, generation storage, uh, offshore wind and onshore wind, uh, open field and rooftop solar PV and so on. And uh, yeah, so here's um, what we also look at is the, the regionally equitable distribution of uh, system costs. So um, in our definition, we define equity as the equal regional distribution of system costs from generation, storage, and transmission. And we measure this with the Gini index, uh, which basically measures the evenness of uh, cost distribution across our nuts regions. And uh, so in the most equitable case, uh, it would be the case if all regions have equal system cost per capita, and um, the least equitable scenario would be, for example, if one region bears the cost for all regions. And this is one of the uh, results that we have. So here are the near optimal uh, spatial allocation scenarios, which we call um, MGA scenarios. Um, uh, we have 100 of these and uh, in terms of installed capacity, electricity generation, storage capacity, grid expansion, and the costs. And we also highlight four uh, distinct scenarios. One is the baseline scenario, which assumes uh, no change in generation capacity, then an MGA scenario with the least system costs, um, then one with the maximum regional equity in terms of system costs, and one that maximizes uh, renewable electricity generation uh, within our cost limit. And uh, with, uh, what you can see here is that um, you know, some generation technologies are more constrained than others, and also that some uh, technologies uh, maximize, or sorry, minimize system costs while others uh, maximize regional equity. And uh, here you can see the distinct scenarios of electricity generation, uh, electricity system infrastructure in terms of generation, storage, and transmission for our four baseline scenarios where you can see you know, where a generation capacity is allocated, uh, where storage capacity, additional storage capacity is needed, and also uh, additional transmission expansion is needed uh, in our six uh, countries. And here is uh, the final slide. So we also look at the regional implications of that electricity system infrastructure. We look at uh, five uh, impacts. Uh, one is the system cost, the regional system cost, uh, the direct employment in the electricity sector, 
uh, greenhouse gas emissions, local air pollution, and also land use. And again, this is for the four distinct scenarios. So here you can see the change, for example, here the change in system cost between the baseline scenario, which assumes the same generation capacity as in 2018, and uh, here uh, is the direct employment changes. So you can see uh, different patterns for different um, targets, either uh, minimizing system cost or maximizing regional equity. And uh, yeah, that's uh, all the slides. Um, yeah, I'd ask a question. Hi, I'm Lena Reichenberg. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, uh, so uh, you, why, why, uh, why cannot the regional equity be taken care of by trade or by other economic instruments? Because as I understood it, you're kind of taking care of the regional equity bottom up by some kind of distribution of the capacities, or did I misunderstand that? Yeah, exactly. So um, it looks at the, the system costs, which is generation, storage, and transmission, and it uh, allocates those costs to the regions. And at the end, I um, so that's not part of the optimization, but after uh, we look at the results and um, score these scenarios in terms of regional equity of those costs. Yeah, but sorry, I, I don't understand why that is equity, though. Why is, an e say, an equal um, distribution of capacity, why is that equity? Can, can that not be taken care of by, by trade, for instance? I'm sure if I understand correctly with, uh, with trade, because, um, so uh, this... Um... Like economic transactions. Okay, so in a, in a way, it's, uh, it's uh, the cost distribution, for, um, and it's also a proxy in a, in a way for autarky between the regions and also the associated impacts in terms of employment and so on. So this is uh, basically uh, a question of how the costs uh, are distributed across the regions and uh, could also be uh, additional uh, uh, community uh, expenses that goes into additional solar capacity and wind generation capacity into the, the regions. Uh, Daniel has a question. Yeah, um, the capacity expansion modeling, that's the expanse model. Um, I, is that informed by results from running uh, PIPSA? Um, or is there a check uh, to make sure that the, the results that are coming out of there are feasible and uh, the inputs are representative? Yeah, so the ex expanse uh, takes care of the electricity generation capacity. So uh, expanse uh, runs at annual resolution. And then uh, these scenarios are then uh, run in the PIPESA model and uh, all of them solve with PIPESA. So what, what PIPESA does is then it uh, does the hourly generation and then uh, adds additional storage and capacity, uh, storage and transmission capacity to make the, the scenarios uh, feasible. Great, thank you. He doesn't seem to be there, so I'll just read yeah. the question. Um, could you talk a bit about how employment is evaluated? Okay, yeah, so we look at, um, so one of the input data comes from a publication that looks at the life cycle employment, and there um, it also looks at different uh, stages, uh, the different uh, employment types, so operation and uh, also the production and so on. And there we specify the regional employment. So we don't, don't look at, for example, where the solar panels are produced, but we look at really the jobs that could be allocated in that regions. So we uh, filter by regional employment and also know only the electricity sector 